today we have JT from a site called Edge House, who I've been interacting with quite a while on Twitter now. I'm not going to bore you. I'll let him basically tell you what they do, and I'm going to hand the reins over to you. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, thanks for having me. I, uh, I, I appreciate it. So what's Edge House? Edge House is a premium NBA betting statistics and analytics platform. We designed it and tailored the whole thing completely for betters. And uh, we provide our users with access to advanced analytical tools used to assist them in making better data-driven betting decisions. That's strong. You've, you, that's polished as well. You've said that before, I can tell. So that's on a, that's on a business card. That's it's your nice. elevated speech. I'm here for it, man. I'm here for that. <laughs> no, I respect that. Obviously, the more basic question would then be what made you want to start the platform? Because I assume you guys were betters beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the founders of Edge House are, are me and my partner, Travis. We were really good friends in college. We both studied engineering, so we took some of the same classes together. I have a background in commodities trading, and uh, in general, he has a background in, in betting. And I was, I was a few years ahead of him, and working as a commodities trader, you know, I would, I would, go, I would, I would go to work, do my thing, and hang out with him after, and just kind of talk to him here and there, and, you know, he would talk to me about his betting, specifically the NBA betting. And we started to see a lot of the same sort of ideas, metrics, setups more or less, and just a lot of parallels between the two. And, uh, you know, as time went on, the more that we interacted and, and talked about trading and betting, and we realized that there's this whole new wave of gambling legalization that you know is hitting the u.s mm -hmm. and uh you know overseas obviously we're on a, a podcast based in the uk just really really ramping up these last two or three years uh you know with with no slowing down in sight and you know the more we talked to our friends and and other you know fellow betters we saw this theme that most people your your day-to-day -day, your average better is really kind of just going in and making decisions based off what they're thinking they're seeing, you know, what they're feeling, what they're reading about in mainstream media. And they're not really going in and, and betting with, with any sort of like data or analytics. Um, if they are, it's usually something really kind of surface level, like, you know, average over the last 10 games. What is their record in the last month? Like stuff like that that just really was surface level and didn't have much substance behind it. Literally yeah. on the front page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it wasn't that people weren't actively seeking it. it we just had felt that it didn't really exist. And mm -hmm. if it did exist, it was overwhelming, you know, with tables just filled with numbers, a lot of just blunt, like really black and white, not visually appealing data kind of just thrown at people. And then from that, you know, they would say, okay, I think player X is going to hit the over, or I think team Y is going to cover tonight. Just really not making betting decisions with any data or analytics driving those decisions. It's fascinating that you say that because the problem that we've definitely both noticed is that both over here, like the gambling culture is very much gambling. Like we like what we, we call them hackers or accumulators. You call them parlays over in the States. But mm -hmm. you know, if, what's becoming more popular is the way of seeing gambling as or, or sports betting rather is more of like a trading mechanism as a trying to extract value from bad lines as opposed to just throwing together accumulators. And I think w what you're doing here is building a, a great way of really highlighting that this is the correct way to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to draw another really big parallel between the two, like the sports betting culture, whatever you want to call it, it it's a market. The way I think of it, it's almost like short term stocks, but on stuff that you actually, you can interpret yourself. By the time you hear about something on Twitter that a stock is going through the roof, it, it's too late, like you've missed it. Whereas yeah. with NBA, yeah. it's stuff you can find yourself and it's that's what you guys do. It puts it all there in front of you. Just easy to manipulate. Just 
yeah, I'm all for it. I've heard that argument a lot too, and you know, I'm I'm kind of a good example of someone that's has their feet in in both pools. Mm-hmm. You know what you're doing when you're placing a trade, when you're making a bet, you're taking a calculated risk. Yeah. So for people that trade stocks to say that you know the market isn't gambling it's it's something about that word i think too the word gambling has a negative connotation for whatever reason it's the stigma stigma. yeah it's the stigma it's it's the stigma exactly and so i i think a lot of people don't like to hear that they're gambling Mm -hmm. but you're taking a gamble or a bet or trade you know Mm -hmm. you can pretty much interchange those three words and so yeah to to kind of circle back like we really just saw a lot of these parallels you know actually for for i think six weeks or so travis sat down with me and kind of just shadowed what i was doing and uh when we really started sitting down and and he was watching we started really really putting together the pieces to like form this puzzle that that bridges the two together and so, yeah, to, to sum everything up, basically our goal for Edge House was to, to provide a platform for bettors, for them to back their, their betting ideas and decisions with, with real strong analytic data that, you know, has some substance and, and isn't just surface level. Just as we start to like go, go through your site and go through all the layers of it, did, mm-hmm. you, did you build this site with a process already in mind of, like, of, of how you would do it? Or did you just think, you know what, I'm going to put everything out there and then I'm going to tailor how I do it based on, what, on the information I'm able to put in front of me? Uh, so a little bit of both. That's, that's a really good question. From the get-go, like one of the things that we thought would be really cool and unique and would help betters is trying to design a platform similar to a trading platform, right? Mm-hmm. So like, when I'm trading, I have a platform, I have my charts the way I like them, you know, I have my set of tools that I use to make trading decisions. That never existed with betters. So we wanted to put together something where betters could come to, figure out what tools they like, you know, and, and go to that day in and day out or whatever, you know, time frame they're betting on and uh, and have everything ready for them. While we've been building this, you know, one of the most interesting things has been How do we get rid of what's not needed? How do we trim the fat? How do we make sure we're adding what's needed? Because every better is different. You know, what Yachty might use might be a little bit different than what I might use, might be a little bit different than what Reese may use. So we started, you know, right now, we've been live for nine weeks or so. We kind of put everything out there. And as the weeks go on, you know, we're reaching out to users, getting feedback. Our latest update that, that we just put out last week, which was the biggest update that we've had so far, included five new tool sets that were totally designed and tailored towards player props and DFS players. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's because our users got back to us and we're like, hey, we're using these tools on the website. It'd be cool if we can put them all in one place. And then as we got into further into discussion, talking about filtering and stuff like that and the setup and all that. So to answer your question, like a little bit of both. Mm. That's good, man. It's good. Utilizing feedback. I mean, you already know that the people who are going to come to you first off are approaching that top bracket of sports betters as well, because they already have this process in mind and they know why you're going to be useful. So they go, they're going to use you. That's a good strategy. I, f- I find it interesting that you immediately went to player props as well. Like you went to the smaller markets. That's, my, that's really interesting to hear. My man, player props are literally, they're getting bigger and bigger as well. Because when I, I've been betting NBA for about, I want to say eight or nine years. I've only really started tapping into player props in the last three, maybe four seasons. It only seems to be something that's really emerged in the last couple of years too. Mm-hmm. And that's why, well, there's a lot of juice in the lines for one which yep. obviously you want to find that really strong angle if you're going to be paying up to your ears worth of juice when you're making a bet. But I'd rather play a prop than a side any day of the week based on the last couple of years. After we launched, after a month or so, we started surveying and, and just kind of taking polls and stuff on what bettors were actually placing money on, like where were they taking risk. And I think 80% of them we're split down the middle between the spread and player props. So if that's where the, if that's where our our betters, you know, are, are taking their risk, 
that's where we want to focus our attention to and really start to build out those hubs, those tools, you know, those analytics and, and really tailor for what they feel like they need to make a quality betting decision. You know, the second thing too is opportunities. Tonight, for example, we have three games. That means there's six bets I can take on the spread or the total or the money line, what have you. But when you look into player props, I mean, there's literally hundreds. Mm -hmm. There are literally hundreds that you could be taking. So the more opportunity, the better chance you have of finding a good quality setup and therefore the higher probability of you making a better betting decision and, you know, generating alpha from that. Mm -hmm. No, that's literally the whole purpose of our channel, our Twitter page, everything. It's not, don't get me wrong, we're having a very good run in the last couple of weeks. But um, our main thing is to preach making good bets. And Mm -hmm. exactly like you said at the start, it's making an informed decision and a calculated risk rather than a gamble exactly something that may not get talked about enough is when it comes to like comparing the stock market to the gambling market let's just say someone that's never taken risk before pulls up a bunch of stuff about the stock market they're usually incredibly overwhelmed they feel inclined to go look at more data when it comes to sports betters kind of think they can just go in and bet off what they again like what they've seen or feel so there's there's like this weird stigma that like one requires more homework and the other doesn't. And uh, that's simply just not the case, especially when you're playing against a bookie or a sports book who defines your risk. They make mm-hmm. their money on that 10 point vig. That minus 110 is minus 110 for a reason. And when yeah. you add that layer, that means that you as a, a risk taker and a better, you got to figure out where your edge is and be careful not to be playing into a game where just mathematically you can't win the standard rule of thumb is that if if you're betting into 110 you better beat the crap out of 110 in order to be profitable i've always thought that like the ego that comes with playing sports is then multiplied when it comes to the ego that is involved with betting sports you know someone's opinion on a sports game that might be the strongest opinion they have in their life which is just (laughs) put it this way if i bet on my team to win in rugby long term i would be broke so yeah yeah. (laughs) Well, if you bet on them to lose long term, you'd be broke too, man. That's that's the, that's the problem. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One thing that that we've noticed is sometimes there there seems to be this misconception that like we at Edge House believe analytics are the end all be all. That that mm-hmm. simply couldn't be further from the truth. When when you're going to make a betting decision, you need to account for several things. We just felt that the analytical piece tends to be missing nine times out of 10. And analytics are, are a big and a very important piece, but that's just it, right? They're, they're one piece of the puzzle. So yeah. I, I want betters out there to, to remember, like when you're going to make a betting decision, Edge House should be one piece of that puzzle. It should be one piece of your process. The analytics should be a strong piece because data doesn't lie, but it's mm-hmm. important to overlay context. I couldn't have said that better myself. It's like you said, it's having the stats in order and then going through and verifying that there's not a narrative or a scenario or a game script that can just completely rip up all the research you've done. If there is, then just, just leave it alone. You don't have to bet it. One of my like most profitable uh, things I look for, especially in, in the NFL, is look-ahead spots. You'll have like the Chiefs drop a game to lesser opposition because they're playing, they're, they're playing the Patriots next week. That's a much larger piece of the pie than anyone gives you credit for. Mm-hmm. Definitely. We're seeing a lot of just people hitting their head against the wall, really not getting anywhere. And the reason that is, is because we're in the last third or the last quarter of the season. These books have Mm -hmm. so much data, especially in the NBA. You know, the NFL is a little different because there's only, I mean, I guess now 18 weeks, but before Mm -hmm. there was only 17. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, when you have sports like baseball, hockey, basketball, these are sports with a lot, a lot of data behind them. So, of course, when we get to that last third, that last quarter of the season, on top of the injuries, the resting, um, certain teams are trying to tank, certain teams are trying to make playoff pushes, Like the dynamic totally changes. The paradigm shifts for those five, six weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's a really important contextual piece to overlay when you're looking at analytics. 
the first like month or so, you're treading on eggshells a bit, you're, you're halving your stakes, you're making sure you've got your angles right. And then there's that sort of stretch in the middle that's about two months long where you've got enough data to be confident on everything. Game 30 to game 60. Yeah, exactly. That's sort of where you want to be making the, the bulk of your money. That's interesting that you say that. So we ran like a couple, you know, custom analytics reports or, or programs, whatever you want to call it, um, trying to figure out exactly when that sweet spot was. And we found that it's usually like games 10 to 35, you know, 15 to 40 is really, really when you can do a lot of damage. Cover percentages for the books are much lower in that time frame. Once you get to the 50, 60 mark, then things kind of start to, to smooth out a little bit. They've all caught up and teams have found what works for them. And so they're repeating that more times than not. And the, the behavior is more consistent. What works for you the first five weeks of the season is going to be very different than what works for you in the last five. You got to yeah. adapt or you're going to lose or the book's going to take your money. I like, I like that you've broken it down to sections of when you know you have enough data and then when there's too much data. I, I, I can appreciate that. Yeah, well, our whole thing's edge and edges fade. And if you really want to do some damage, you got to figure out when certain edges work and, you know, size them properly and stuff like that. That's part of the game. Before we sort of go into like angles and stuff we've been betting, do you want to show off your uh, show off your tools? Interpret yeah. that yeah, how yeah. you want, but I'm talking about your website. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> Webcam turns on. Yeah. Run. And we got a lawsuit. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think me and Reese talked about this before the podcast uh, a few days ago when we were just trying to figure everything out, um, talking about same game parlays. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being able to, to throw like a player prop in with, with a spread or a total bet, what have you. So one of the most powerful things with Edge House is being able to kind of bridge the gap. And a real simple example of that would be like, let's see what Jokic does when the Nuggets cover. 37. So right out the gate, and then if <laughs> fucking you know, hell. Keep in mind this is for the playoffs too. So let's uh, let's give it a little bit more of a sample size. Let's do last thirty days when the Nuggets cover. Okay, so this is a this is perfect. So like you said, it bumped from thirty one and a half to thirty two and a half. Right here in the last thirty days when the Nuggets are covering in five games, Jokic is averaging. 31.4 so that point means a lot to me mm -hmm. right oh, we can even take it a step further and so now we're back to the full season while Jokic is covering let's reset that and I believe the line is still minus two for the Nuggets so yeah I what, think it is let's see what Jokic does when the line is minus two or lower. <laughs> so now we know when the line is minus two or lower, um, he's putting up 26.1. So there's another contextual piece. Let's, mm -hmm. let's refine that a little bit with the last 30 days. So in the last 30 days when the line is minus two or lower, 30 and a half, six games. Drill down, look at those games. 38, 32, 32, 31, 30, 20. So Damn clearly that 31 and a half to 32 and a half is the difference, splits the difference. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that with line movement, whether it be on the spread um, or on the prop, what have you, can, can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can look all, it really just depends on what you want to look at. That's so interesting. Like you, you already know that in order for him to get over this line, like he really does have to cover, but like the, the, the Nuggets have to cover. It's not like, uh, I don't know, I want to say like Lillard, who is getting over 30 or is not getting over 30, that I, I would have an outright guess that it wouldn't really matter if they're covered. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we could take a look at it. So I'll bring up Portland, reset this. So this is just the season, Denver and Portland mm -hmm. average players. Um, we're talking about Dame, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Damien just averaging 28.8 on the season up through, up or coming into today. Oh, you know what? Actually, a cooler view. 
So if I click on this, I can drill down by covers, pushes, or no covers. <laughs> I can change this. So we can see in covers, when the Portland covers, it's 29.1. And mm -hmm. when they don't, it's 21, 20 and a half. So you're completely right. It just yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> I'd like to add that it would have taken me about four hours to figure that out. Yeah, exactly. It's just such a time-saving thing. <laughs> well, I'm wasting my time not buying it. <laughs> and now with that statement, you have analytical data that you can back that thesis with. Mm -hmm. And that's when you really start to form like a robust betting you know, decision. Uh, Wild. Really impressed, man. Genuinely, like that is... <laughs> Yeah, if you bet NBA, then that should probably be in your arsenal, is all I'm going to say. Well, here's the thing, too, is like, that was just kind of, or what I've shown you so far today on, on this recording is it's just kind of how I see it. Some people totally could use this th through a completely different lens. Maybe you've, you know, you fair starter bench more than I do. Maybe home road is a big one. Maybe Days Rest is a big one for you. Maybe Fave Dog is a big one for you. You know, yeah. So there's 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 a whole bunch of different ways and different scenarios that you can set up using the filtering. Um, different ways you can see it with sorting and and the drill down. Some people might like the bar views better for certain tools. You know, some people might like the lines similar to like a stock chart. You know, some people might like the curve, you know, you could just go all day and just figure out what you like and what you like to see and then really start to refine that as your betting data comes in. One of those really like kind of stuff that maybe the books are kind of missing on a, a good example is Derek Rose rebounds. I was looking at it before we got on and just in the playoffs alone, his line is still set at three and a half um, for the next game. Mm. And if you look at the playoffs, he's averaging 4.75. The guy's just been hitting. I mean, he fell off here. And then I think, if you look at like the last 30 days, pretty consistent. I mean, he's yeah. three and a half. He's missed it four times out of, what is this, five, seven, 11 games. I mean, as a... It's someone like trying to grind out an edge here. Like you want those, you want those misses to come in. You don't want him to hit like six in a row because you know the books are really going to react to that. You want him to, you know, land two or three in a row, then miss one. You're happy to yeah. give him a bit back if it means you extend it. It extends your opportunities to to grind that edge out. Exactly, and he's actually kind of a perfect example of that because you can see here, and I resorted um, by date. You can mm -hmm. see like two, two, four, six, six, one, five, five, four, six. So. These little dips keep the line lower for the books. Mm. And, you know, maybe he doesn't hit tomorrow, but if they win and he gets another shot, maybe you hammer that, you know, coming into game six. Yeah. See, so you're just not going to pick up on that when you look at, like, Basketball Ref or these other these other great sites that have been in business for, you know, a few years. You just don't have, you just don't have the data laid out for you like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so much easier, too, and you can visually see it. You are doing kind of form. The, you are doing the Lord's work here, JT. I must say. <laughs> well, I I really want to stress, like, like I said, the best betters, the pros, they have their setups. They figure out what their setups are by taking different shots, just throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks, documenting what's sticking, documenting mm -hmm. the numbers behind what's sticking, and actually calculating if they have an edge with those setups so like edge edge is real easy it's it's a number if it's positive you're making money if it's negative you're not if that number is not positive you're just you were literally just losing money mm -hmm. you have no edge there's no way for you to get it back so you also got to balance like the edge being big enough to be worth it too yep if, you yep. Know, if, if if your if your percentage if your edge percentage is real small, you're grinding out like a one two percent edge. You got to you have to think like is there is there a better way I can make money here? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, if you look at the actual edge formula, it hand it it takes care of what you said. Like so, when I say is that number positive or negative, I'm not just talking about um, percentage. I'm I'm literally talking about this formula right here. Right. 
so what is edge? It's a mix of, or it's a calculated value derived from three things, your positive expectancy, your negative expectancy, and your win percentage. So your positive expectancy is how much do you win on your winning bets? And that could either be points, that could be dollars, however you want to, whatever unit you want to use, what is that expectancy? And then your negative expectancy is the opposite. How much do you lose on your losing bets? And then your winning percentage is just, you know, the winning percentage on the bets in the sample. Um, so if you multiply the, your winning percentage by the positive, by your positive expectancy, and then you subtract the absolute value of the negative expectancy times one minus the win percentage, which would be the losing percentage, um, that will give you a number. And if that number is positive, you have an edge and now you like the light bulb really should go off because mm -hmm. you somehow found a way to beat the books with whatever setup, with whatever scenario, with whatever bet that you're hitting. If you have positive true edge, you've discovered potentially a, a, an incredible thing. And now your job becomes, okay, how can I find this setup, this bet, this scenario day to day or whatever the time frame may be and using something like edge house may help you put together like a standard set of tools to use to identify that setup yeah and when you have all these things together you really start to put together something constructive that you can refine you can press you can lay back off you can size in and out of it's just a it's a matter of doing your homework and and we're trying to make doing your homework a lot easier by uh by creating this platform that you can go in, use the tools that you want to use, figure out what you like to look for, and then get that quick and easy. Mm -hmm. I've got to say, man, that you guys are crushing it. Yeah, I, you, I'm I'm very, very impressed, it. man. I'm, I'm genuinely not just like gassing you up because you've agreed to come on the show or whatever. It's just, like I, it saved me hours every day. Well, that's that, that's that's really awesome to hear because I mean that's been our goal is is to help betters find their edge. Um, and we know, like, I, I also want people to know, we know that the, the platform isn't super, super comfortable if you're not, you know, if you don't have any analytic or analytic or statistical background, mm -hmm. but we're working really hard to figure out ways of how we can make this better for the average, you know, day-to-day -day risk taker. Mm -hmm. Um, analytics just by nature are very hard to to bridge a gap between like really mathy people and, and and people that aren't so mathy um they just are like they always will be analytics involve a lot of numbers a lot of different formulas and and sometimes algorithms and and charting and stuff like that um it really leaves a lot of people in the dust and and we don't want that to happen anymore so we're we're trying we're working hard day in and day out to figure out how we can make this easier and better for for the day-to-day -day better that that may not have that strong mathy analytical background mm -hmm. um and it's it's a daunting task i i gotta tell you guys like when we've been building this it's it's really hard to figure out how to put together something that is easy to use for most people and to derive value from analytically it's it just is mm -hmm. um so, you know, to all our users out there already, or to our Twitter followers, the more feedback we get from you guys, the better we can make this product for you. And uh, we're really working for you guys. And, and we want as much feedback mm -hmm. that we can work off of as we can get. So for, for those who have given us feedback, we, we really appreciate it. I think that's so valuable, especially a new product like this, where you are appealing to everybody. It's yeah. And, and we don't model. want people to, to fly blind anymore. Most people just have these really dull surface level, like small pieces of information without much context or, or much scenario kind of tailored idea of, of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, why, why do we want to give the books more money? Exactly. exactly. No like one does. We're betters. We're, we're all together. We're all in this together. We're like we are trying to take the books money. So one of the cool things is we can collaborate, we can figure out what works, what doesn't work, and exploit those edges together and collectively succeed. Mm -hmm. And uh I, I think there's a lot of power in that and, and might be something that doesn't go um or isn't is spoken about as much. 
Yeah, the aim of what both we at Beat the Line and you guys at Edge House do is we, we, we're united in the sense that we're trying to change the narrative away from this. You know, you see various social media influencers push the parlay on you. You see, like, guys drinking, like, Dom Perignon and baseball <laughs> caps and popping stuff. And oh, no, I just hit this, like, 17 parlay. You're like, no, they, they're, they're buying all that stuff with the money that people have given them to get these crap bets off them. We need to yeah. change the stigma on gambling from, okay, this is just, no, I'm just throwing money up the wall, the book always wins, to actually, no, they don't if you know how to do it. Like you said, they're always pouring, like, Dom P. They're always just, like, taunting these ridiculous parlays that almost never hit. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, then the account gets deleted and another one pops up and they shoot <laughs> again. Yeah. And, you know, one exactly. of my personal favorites thing to see <laughs> is there's always the, the laptop on the beach and life is just easy making money. And it's... uh it's it's a lie it, it just yeah. is this stuff is really hard and you got to be sharp and uh we we want to empower and and help fellow betters as much as we can well power to you man we'll be here with you so looking forward now like what's the what's what's the what's the future plan here for edge house you delving into other sports adding 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 new opportunities here or what's the what's the deal definitely definitely looking to to add new sports um as far as that goes, our, our next big target, and uh, we're looking to get launched before the season starts, which will be great, is the NFL. Oh, um, my God. I mean, it's the <laughs> biggest uh, it's the bit- biggest betting market in the world by far, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of edge there. There, there yeah. really is. Uh, with the short game sample size and, and the way certain matchups play out, there's, there's a lot of edge to be exploited there. So we're mm-hmm. super, super excited to get our NFL leg of the platform launched. We're not going to charge anything extra for that. It's, it's going to be included with the membership as is yes. now. MLB, NHL, you know, traditional football, soccer, as mm-hmm. we call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, even like F1, golf, and uh, <laughs> some of these other like rugby type sports are really on our radar too. Um, but our primary focus right now for adding – the next sport is the NFL, and uh, we've been working hard on it already, and uh, expect that to be to be coming out soon. 